Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in Bedfordshire shooting Driven Partridge with Paul Childerley, plus Byron reviews the Merkel Helix. We've joined Paul Childerley for another day's sport on Beckering's Park Estate, but this time he's told us to pack the shotguns and leave the rifles behind. Yeah, at Childerley Sporting, basically we offer um, rifle shooting with the, with the predominantly Chinese water deer, Munt Jack. Uh, we do a lot with roe as well through the summer and the rut um, and the fallow deer. Um, then we do the game shooting with um, the bigger days uh, on the partridge of pheasant. Um, like I say, you set the new shoot up now. Uh, with the uh, smaller, slightly smaller days and the walked up days. Right, great. If you'd like to get all your kit together and um, load up into the gun trailer and we'll make a move. Great. We're all set for a day of driven partridges, Bedfordshire style. As a measure of how prestigious the shoot is, executive producer Wes has said he'll shoot this one and insists the rest of the team stay at home. Other than camera number one, of course. It's time to see whether the UK's home of Chinese water deer can do the business with the game birds as well. Um, first drive this morning was uh, the French horn drive. Um, we wanted to fly the birds down, back down to the, the plantation and, and the big wood. One of our probably best, well, bigger partridge drives. Here's something. Come on this way. Good shot, sir. Any doubts are quickly dispelled as the birds start to pour over the line and Wes duly obliges. Yeah, Wes, Wes was in, was in uh, the hot spot and uh, he dealt with them really well. He's, uh, he's actually quite a good shot. I hate to say it, it pains me to say it, but he actually is a good shot. Yeah. Wes proves there's no need for barrel warmers when the birds are flying this well. The first drive of the day and he's already filling his boots. The Ely VIPs are leaving them dead in the air. That was an entertaining drive. There's quite a lot of partridges flying low among the guns, but an equal number, if not a greater number, have actually lifted. With a mixed bag of partridge and some pheasants, it's been a fruitful drive for all the guns. Wes can't seem to wipe that smile off his face. Surely he'll have to slow down and drive number two. But in fact, Paul tells us that on a good day, this beat could be even better. Here we are. I'll, I'll muster something up. Take it off the range. Take it off the range, yeah. We won't be eating it. Chop woodcock, so they both get up and get up. Nice and quiet. Okay. Uh, that's the Hampton Road Drive. Uh, it's, it's like a, a valley, a, a block of cover on top uh, of maize. Um, it's probably one of our better drives. Uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's a little bit too sunny for it really today. But uh, we pushed a few partridge off there, they come well. So yeah. Just, a, just like a fill-in drive, really. As it turns out, conditions just aren't right for this one today. 
The beaters advance in formation and flush a few birds, but Wes lets most that comes his way fly by, opting for a solitary better bird earlier on. Here we go. Well, just the one that time. Yeah, stop for mid morning drinks and uh, champagne and whatnot. Oh, and, uh, which went down well, <laughs> loosened the team up. And, uh, it, which it did actually. The team's like uh, gelled after that. And uh, from then on, it, it went well. Meant to be uh, an enjoyable day out. So uh, you've got to try and get the team to enjoy the day and uh, relax and, and shoot well as well at the same time. Uh, John Fernandez, he, he does all the chef chefing for me. Um, he's uh, got his own business uh, down in London. He travels up um, for, for all the shoots and uh, yeah, great guy. Uh, yeah, just, just perfect, easy. Uh, next drive was the Manor Drive. Um, it's a block of woodland with a bit of maze behind it, um, behind actually the Manor House. Um, it's a drive where a lot of birds go back um, round the side of the wood and over the house. Um, Guns tend to like the drive because it's just such a, a mixed drive of birds going in all directions um, and, it, and everyone's like got their own, like, own area to shoot because it's not in one straight line because they curled right round the back of the farm and back of the farmhouse and right back down to the wood. So uh, everyone tends to enjoy that drive. Um, so yeah, put that one in. Again, we only put that in because of the sunshine, um, just to give us a bit more time for the next drive. Yeah, he's on the edge of the woodland there, yeah, on the edge of the, on the wood next to the garden there. Um, yeah, you've seen it perform again there. There are a few more pheasants that drive, and uh, yeah, as they were, quite a few were breaking out, going over guns one, two, and three, and um, some over the guns out in the field, but uh, yeah, had a few shots there, shot two, two or three pheasants and three or four partridge, so. Another nice, nice little drive. Then we did a, a drive uh, called Horse Chippings. Um, basically, it's a, a long belt of trees with a cover up each side, which is maize. Um, and we bring all the birds back from the back fields um, down to it. <coughs> it's a good partridge and pheasant drive. Uh, it's one of our bigger drives. A bit of advertising, I call it, that drive. So I come down and people say, oh, what are those? And, and how do we get to shoot those? So, yeah. A Chinese water deer tries to hog centre stage, but it soon makes way for the birds, which start to come thick and fast. For a few happy minutes, Wes can barely reload fast enough. Did I get you that time? Very nearly. <laughs> <laughs> With our cameraman suitably traumatised, we call it a day for this particular drive. Yeah, back here, um, three course lunch today, um, soup and um, lamb shank and then treacle tart pudding. Um, which seemed to go down well, they seemed to really enjoy, enjoy the lunch. Um, then back out for two more drives this afternoon. Uh, first drive is Rodwood. Um, we plank uh, a big block of wood and up to the top wood. There we go. Um, it's, it's basically driven from the wood. There's a block of cover of maize up there, but it's, it's actually driven from the wood. Um, there's some good pheasants on that drive. They come back to go back home, basically, uh, back down to the bottom, bottom of the woodland where the, where the guns stand, and also to the drive we do in the morning, um, horse chippings. They, they actually tend to fly back to there as well. So they, they, do, they do get on the tail and try and get ah, back home. Over the top. The more Wes shoots, the more he gets into it, and his tally rises accordingly. He's certainly experiencing the best in English game shooting. They tended to come out all in one go rather than in bursts, and there were a few partridge came over early on. Um, but yeah, another reasonable drive. Quite a lot of stuff staying low because there's not a lot of wind today. But uh, 
I think all the shots had some, uh, all the guns rather had some shooting and um, you know, a few more to uh, help fill the bag. Yeah, final last drive of the day. Um, it's a drive we do in, in later part of the year. It's, uh, it's high sands drive in reverse. Um, basically, we drive the pastures normally back into the middle of the estate um, all season. But as, as most game birds do, they, they get used to getting out the sides or going back on the beaters. Um, and as they have been the last sort of like month or so, a big group has. So we, we do it the last two or three shoots in reverse, and that's what we've done today. Um, some good birds actually on that drive. I think a few of them are still uh, sorting out the cartridges in the pockets and bits and pieces, but yeah, they uh, soon sharpened up a bit then after that. Ah, that's more like it. Ah, behind it both times. Come on, Wes. All right. How'd you get on? Apart from the one that you went, <sighs> apart from that, all right. Well, on yeah, the bridge, so shot. Uh, I had a couple of rights and left at partridge, which was nice, and then I had a left and right at the pheasants. At least one, maybe two. I probably had a dozen birds that time. Well done. It's all right. Shot nice, well. nice, uh, nice drive. Yeah. They all came over before I was ready to start. With. I had I one ear plug in. Going. You call a rookie error. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Good day, isn't it? Yeah, good it was day. a lovely day. Thank you very much. I wasn't actually ready when. Uh, when they started coming over, uh, and they seemed to come over in um, a couple of big bunches to start with, but um, in fairness to Paul, uh, there were still plenty of birds left for the remainder of the drive as well. So it um, started off with plenty of fast and furious partridge action and then ended up with uh, pheasants towards uh, the end of it. So all in all, pretty good drive. I don't think I've actually uh, shot through any of the electricity cables between the pylons, so I think we're safe. <laughs> How did you get on there? Um, not bad. I had um, a couple of rights and left at Partridge, which is always satisfying, and then uh, missed a couple as well, but that's the way it goes. It uh, wouldn't be any fun if you hit them all, would it? <laughs> the final bag was uh, 229, um, three ducks, uh, 81 pheasants and the rest partridges. Um, so yeah, they had, they had a good day. Normally with a few more pheasants, um, probably 50-50. Um, but this year we shot the pheasants a little bit earlier just because of the weather and uh, the partridges were still very bunched up. <laughs> Million dollar question. <laughs> um, su successful shoot. Sporting birds, everybody enjoying themselves and <laughs> trying to make a living, to be truthful. It, it, it is a business but uh, it's quite a hard business. Wesley proving a dab hand with a brown in there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. An auction held by the Dallas Safari Club has raised $350,000 for rhino conservation. The auctioned item was a hunting permit for a black rhino in Namibia's Mangeti National Park. This beats the previous record for an auctioned permit by over 50%. Dallas Safari Club's director Ben Carter said he was proud of what the auction had achieved in taking a stand to help ensure the future of an iconic species. Read more in the next issue of Sporting Rifle, out next week. Anti-shooting protesters racked up huge expense for the taxpayer as the full cost of the Badger Cull trials was revealed. The cull cost a total of £2.5 million in policing costs, with protest camps and disruption a common feature of the six-week trial periods. Environment Secretary Owen Patterson said the policing costs were vastly outweighed by the price of leaving bovine TB unchecked. It's been estimated that the disease could cost the UK a billion pounds over the next decade. Sporting Rifle magazine celebrates its 100th issue this month. The magazine started as a supplement to Target Sports in 2005, before quickly becoming an independent monthly. It has since had three editors at the helm and doubled in size. Editor Pete Carr said it had been a real joy to deliver the magazine to this milestone. The issue features a look back at the magazine's history and hunts for all six UK deer species. Look out for it in newsagents from Thursday. Daystate has won Airgun Shooter magazine's coveted Airgun of the Year award for the third year running. 
the Huntsman Classic and Regal models jointly won the award for 2013. The Egg and Shooter team praised it as the sporter everyone's talking about. Feierauch's HW100 won top PCP, SMK and Airarm scooped the top Springer awards, and Gamo's Whisper LGT won best gas ram. And finally, the EU is to hold a consultation on its firearms directive this year. In 2013, the European Commission announced plans to rewrite its firearms directive, which many speculated would mean further legal restrictions on firearm ownership. And it has now set its sights on pushing forward with the new directive as early as this autumn. The Countryside Alliance said it would challenge any attempt to impose unnecessary restrictions on shooters. That was the Shooting Show News. This week on The Shooting Show, we're going to be taking a look at the Merkel RX Helix. This is a full-bore, straight-pull rifle. Now, those of you who have seen it before are probably used to seeing it in its wooden stock version, which is quite a nice rifle to look at. But this is synthetic throughout. This is very much the workhorse model. Um, otherwise, it's exactly the same. The, the working mechanism and the action is absolutely identical. Now, normally, when I get a rifle in, I spend a lot of time on the range getting used to how it works and forming some sort of opinion of the rifle first before I take it to the field. Um, I did everything in reverse with this rifle because not long after it arrived I had the chance to go up and see my friend Scott McKenzie in Sky. The conditions for the few days that I was there were pretty terrible. It was windy and raining most of the time, but exactly the kind of environment that you want to test a rifle in. If it can operate in those kind of extremes, you know the rest of the time you're going to have no problem whatsoever. And most of you have probably seen the end result on the shooting shot already. We managed to bag a stag and uh, Scott seemed to take a bit of a shine to the rifle as well. But anyway, with that uh, all said, let's start taking a look at exactly how this rifle is put together and I'm going to start with what is possibly the cleverest aspect of this rifle and that is the fact that it is the most simple multi-barrel system I have seen to date. Today there are a lot of switch barrels on the market especially from other European gun makers but Merkel have really thought about how to do this in the most efficient way possible and I'm going to show you how quick it is to achieve it. Simply depress this button on the forestock, slide it off, put it on the ground. Every other uh, switch barrel that I've ever used requires some sort of external tool in order to remove the barrel from the receiver. Not so with the Merkel. Simply grab this lever here, lift it up so it's 90 degrees with the action, grab the barrel, receiver with both hands, and gently pull. And it comes out like that. Now, as most of you will be aware, if you're switching between calibers in different families, say from a treble 2 up to a 243, you will actually need a different head on your bolt. Well, Merkel have thought about this as well, because if you do this barrel change with the bolt forward, when you remove the barrel, the bolt actually comes with it. And simply by turning it with your hand, the head comes out, you take your new head, you put it back in your barrel by lining up the arrows, and then simply slip it back in the receiver the exact reverse of what you've done to remove the barrel. Like so, push the lever up, put the forestock on, and just like that, you're ready to shoot another caliber. Now one of the most important aspects of any rifle of this type is that when you take a barrel out and put it back, the zero should remain exactly the same. So before we get to the rest of the rifle, let's check and make sure that is the case with the Merkel. So just over 100 meters, this isn't the tightest group in the world, but you do have to remember that between every single one of these shots, I took the barrel off and I put the rifle back together. Now one aspect at play there is that I would have been moving my position, I wasn't as comfortable, my heart rate would have been up a little bit, so some of this group uh, I think could be accounted to me. Uh, the tightest that we had this ammo shoot through the Merkel uh, was about 1.2 inches, and this is obviously um, a bit over that. Once we got it settled in 
um, to what we were using, uh, which was 165 grains, uh, it was shooting that around the inch mark. Um, so perfectly acceptable for stalking. And another thing that you have to remember with a rifle like this is that it's designed for rapid shooting, um, but I mean, this is perfectly acceptable uh, for the hill. And as you saw when we went out with Scott, we had absolutely no problem um, going on the range, being happy with the results, finally going out and getting a stag. Now content with the switch barrel aspect of this rifle, we can turn our attention to the action itself. And again, with the RX Helix, this is something quite unique. The way that Merkel achieve producing the fastest straight pull in the world is by having geared loading. And essentially what that means is that for every one inch that you pull or push the bolt handle, the actual shaft and bolt head will move too. And you can see here how easy it is to do. It is designed to be pushed forward with the ball of your hand and pulled back with your fingers. And that way you can cycle and load bullets very quickly indeed. There's no doubt that this is a very satisfying action to use, and there's no question that it is also incredibly fast. In fact, Tim Pilbeam and I did some tests for the shooting show, specifically looking at the speed of reloading the straight pools, and uh, the, the Merkel came out on top. It's definitely the fastest bolt action that I've ever laid my hands on. Now, unlike your standard turn bolts with your quite basic and tried and tested designs, you can basically field strip those and put it back together and fix a lot of problems that you might have. One fear that I have if you really were to get down and dirty with this rifle is that it would be a very difficult rifle for you to fix yourself. The safety mechanism on the RX Helix isn't a safety in the traditional sense. Uh, they join Blaser in offering a cocking lever at the back of the rifle. And essentially what that means is with the, the bolt closed and around in your chamber, your rifle can remain uncocked and you only cock the rifle by pushing it forward at the last moment when you're ready to fire. If you come up with a, a circumstance where you've now cocked the rifle but you don't need to take that shot, by simply depressing the little button on top, you can slide the lever back down. It's fairly quiet in operation. Um, it is a modern move to increase safety in rifles. We turn our attention to the magazine. Merkel has stuck with what is tried and tested. It's nothing particularly fancy. It's a single stack design. It's got metal sides, a plastic bottom. It's ejected from the rifle. Um, via two levers here. You have to depress both of them and the magazine is sprung loaded so it'll bounce into your hand. Um, but that seems to work just fine, no complaints there. The trigger in terms of operation is very good. Um, I haven't checked the pull weight on it but it feels about two and a half pounds. It's very crisp. I doubt anyone will really have any major complaints with it. And lastly, um, in terms of the mounting system on the Merkel, whereas a lot of uh, European manufacturers have gone down the route of providing unique mounting systems for their rifle. Uh, Merkel have removed this extra cost, which for some rifles can be quite costly indeed, and they've just built in internal integral um, weaver type rails, um, both at the front and the back, which basically means you can decide what rings you want to put on your rifle. A huge amount of thought has gone into designing this rifle. Um, it's not a cheap rifle, around two and a half thousand pounds uh, for the synthetic model, it's competing with a lot of very good rifles on the market of the same price and a little bit less. Um, it's certainly a very satisfying rifle to use. And you know, if you're looking for a rifle that is a little bit different and you are somebody who really appreciates um, the different aspects of engineering that goes into a rifle. I think the RX Helix might just be for you, but it's certainly one of those rifles that you really have to get on a range and play with, test, um, go through and, and rapid fire some rounds to really get a feel for it. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been 
The Shooting Show.